Hey folkies, I might have found the cheapest nickel harpa. The nerdy harpa. What is it exactly? How did I come across it? Where is it from? Who makes them? How can you get one? And more importantly, does it work? How does it sound? And my entire honest opinion about the instrument? All these questions and more will be answered in this video. One day I got a message from Jaap Brandt, a musician from the Netherlands, whom I didn't know before that, asking me, do you want to get a nickel harpa? As any reasonable person would. I said yes, and after a little bit of waiting and many, many male shenanigans, I ended up with a big green box in which there was a nerdy harpa. After a little bit of fixing of one piece that had been slightly damaged by the transport and slowly tuning up the instrument to A440 Hz, it was time to play. Before we get onto the sound of this little beastie, what are the nerdy harpas exactly? Jaap is an engineer, mechanical, technical engineer, who had an idea of making mechanical instruments more affordable. His first thought was hurdy-gurdy and he started working on the nerdy-gurdy, which is a similar idea as the nerdy harpa. The idea is to have an open source plan on a file that anyone can download and then use for laser cutting and 3D printing one of these instruments. The files are free but if one doesn't have access to those machines, one can also purchase a kit with the pre-printed and cut pieces for building your own instrument. The price of a kit is at the moment around 310 euros, which is around 10 times less than a fully built instrument. One way to cut down costs was to replace solid, beautiful wood by plywood, which of course does not have the same resonating properties as solid woods that are used in instrument building, but is still solid and also very sturdy. Also does not expand and retract as much with air humidity as most wood types would do. And then you have cheap yet sturdy factory built pieces, like for example, tuning screws and 3D printed in very hard plastic materials, pieces that don't exist otherwise on the market, such as the tangents of the keyboard. But the main way to cut down cost is of course the time and skill required from a professional builder to make such an instrument. Here you just put the plans into the machine and receive the pieces or you buy the kits and you assemble it as an IKEA furniture piece. Hence the nickname of this instrument, Ikea Gurdy or Ikea Harpa. Sounds like a fun project for the handcrafty people out there. Hmm? But does it work? Is it actually an instrument and not just a toy? We'll see about that. Okay, so first thing, very clearly, this is not a toy. It is an instrument, it does work, the strings sound, it produces music, and it is very playable, it doesn't have weird stuff, like weird noises, except for the normal weird nickel harpa noises, but it doesn't have anything that gets stuck, the keys function. It sounds like a nickel harpa. It, it is a nickel harpa. It, it's functional. Yay, good start. <laughs> Then on to more specifics. I like the keyboard. I think it's very nicely designed. It's 
ergonomic, it's comfortable, it's neither too big space nor too little. It makes a bit of extra noise as compared to mine, but it can also be a um, question of which kind of felting has been put and maybe also just the sign of plastic hitting on strings instead of wood. I personally am not disturbed by the clicking of keys on instruments with keys, like nickel harpas. I think it's a part of the instrument, but I guess if some people are disturbed by the sound, there would be possibilities of adding more felting or something that, you know, dampens this clicking sound a little bit. However, there is a kind of big drawback for me. It is that here so far I have played only on the three upper strings, the A, D and G, or A, C and G if you tune Swedish. Um, but I have not played on the C string, low C, because it doesn't really work, so... You can hear that the sounds are not really defined. It does a bit like this. There's a bit of adjustment to make in the plans here. I mean, you can play on the C string, but... It's really unclear sound, as opposed to... On the higher strings, it works very nicely. So the fourth row, mm, not really there yet. Needs adjustments, at least. To be honest, I also think that maybe it's not really a good idea to have a fourth row on this instrument, because having a fourth row on a soprano nickel harpa in general is just tricky. It's like having a fifth string on a fiddle. It is possible. There are five strings uh, fiddles existing and some sound very, very nice, but it's a little bit pushing out the boundaries of the instrument. And especially for going in the lower register on an instrument, usually you need more volume. That's why a cello is much bigger than a violin. It's the string length, but also kind of the volume of the instrument. So for getting all the bass sounds and resonance and everything, you kind of need a bigger body. And I also wonder if you don't need specific wood with good fibers and maybe plywood, you know, it's not the exact good sounding bass wood, if you see what I mean. Also, inside of the instrument, I haven't seen it open because I didn't make it, I don't know how it's built, but I can see from here that there is a bit of a construction in there to hold the pressure, probably. And I wonder if this construction inside does not just, you know, take away some resonating chamber. It, it does, of course, but maybe that's also one of the reasons why it doesn't sound so good in the low register, even the open string. I mean, it sounds okay, but it's kind of quiet and you can see it's really on the limit of the instrument the string vibrates a lot it's it will touch the string the keys or the resonance strings it's really really on the edge of what is possible for this instrument basically now that we're on the sound in general one of my main critics of this instrument is that it sounds very quiet it sounds <laughs> it sounds okay but the sound is kind of weak and doesn't have a lot of presence this is even more so because my usual nickel harpa has a very strong voice and a lot like a big volume so let's play a little tune on this instrument and then on my usual nickel harpa to see the difference I will try to play similarly on both instruments but of course it's difficult <laughs>
instrument does not really have round, generous sound. What it has are the resonant strings, and of course they do the job. They do their resonating job, but it's not really this big vibration that you can expect from a full-fledged Nico Harpa. And I miss it when I play. I think it's no problem for learning to play, but I would not use that on stage nor in recordings. Basically, it's not an instrument that the sound makes me like, ah, but it does sound like a Nico Harpa. It, it is a Nico Harpa. It works like one, it has this resonating effect, but it's very quiet and really on the lower end of the roundness of sound. I forgot to tell you that this is a prototype. It is not on the market yet, this four rows nerdy harpa. And if I got it for free, it is to give my review. It is to test it and try and say to Yap what could be made better and how. And then the kits that you can buy or plans that you can download for this model of instrument will be improved so you don't meet these problems. I am still telling you about them because I think it's interesting to know the limits. I am still telling you because I think it's interesting to know the limits of the instrument and also to just realize that even if you have something that works, it doesn't mean that it really sounds good or that it's really, you know, very playable in every possible way. A few other technical aspects I would like to talk about. It is a heavy instrument. When you play sitting, like I do most of the time, it's not really a problem. But the head especially is very heavy due to the mechanics. They work very nicely, by the way. Very good mechanics. I love those big uh, screws. They look a bit weird, but they really work. But they are very heavy. It's really heavy in the head. So if you would be playing standing, it would be a weight on your shoulder. And then there is the tailpiece situation. So... I very much understand what the idea is. It's to have a cello tailpiece for the main strings so that it's factory made and you don't need to make anything. And then you have the resonance strings on the sides. And you have also this little extra piece uh, on the tail of the instrument, which is good for putting your arm on. That's a very good piece, love it. But this situation is a little bit weird. If you are playing with like a knitted jumper, you will have the problem of the fibers catching in the strings there. It's happened to me many times. But if you play without sleeves, you will feel those strings and they are quite uncomfortable. So I have listed a few suggestions to Yap about how to solve this tailpiece situation there. And we'll see how it gets modified in the future. about this instrument is that it works, it's nice, but it's not a full-fledged Nico Harpa. And it is not pretending to be. It is not pretending to be a great Nico Harpa that is very, very cheap, or that you can just put yourself together like an Ikea piece of furniture and that sounds great. No, it's not pretending to be that. It's pretending to be an open source plan for building a Nico Harpa as cheaply as possible and yet have something that sounds that is playable and that sounds even kind of nice actually. And it does it very well. 
I am impressed. I was not expecting something that good out of plywood and 3D printing, but it is quite nice. And if I did not have a Neca Harpa and I would want to have one absolutely, I would be thrilled to get this one. So I think that this is a very good alternative to a fully fledged Neca Harpa if you are very short on money. The cost of a real Neca Harpa is one of the things that puts a barrier to many people for getting one and learning to play. And I'm glad that we finally have kind of a solution that allows people with even very little money to get one and learn to play. And as a beginner instrument, it is really decent. I think that one should not settle with it. And once they have saved up the money to buy a real Nikal Harpa, that one can either sell it or better because it's open source, so let's keep it this way, give it away to someone else who would really like to learn as well. Which is what I will do with this one. I got it for free and I will give it for free to a friend of mine who is dreaming of playing the Nikal Harpa. Also, it's a very nice project for people who are handcrafty and possibly have access to a laser cut machine and a 3D printer, uh, or not if you want to buy the kits. It's a nice project and in the end you get an instrument that actually works, that you can, again, sell or better give to someone if you don't use it yourself. Lastly, I would recommend this instrument to seasoned players who need a cheap nickel harpa for some weird project. For example, you're gonna go film in the rain or in the snow, or you're going to travel in possibly very rough conditions and you want to take your nickel harpa with you. Well, if this one gets damaged, it's not as bad as if it is a very expensive Esbjörn Hogmark nickel harpa or something like this. In the description of this video, you will find the link to the website of the Nerdy Harpa and the Nerdy Gurdy, by the way, as well. So if you are interested, go check it out. And also if you are a, an advanced player on Nickel Harpa and you will want to get one of these to try it and give your feedback to Jaap Brandt, just do so. <laughs> because I guess he will be very happy to get more feedback and more suggestions about how to make this design better. As he is constantly working on making this a better instrument, a better design. By all means, share this project, the website, the concept and this video with every person who could be interested by it. People who like to tinker and musicians and people who have dreamt of getting a Nikol Harpa for years but just can't afford it. Share it. It's an open source project. It's really something that is built upon its community. Don't forget to like and subscribe and consider supporting me on Patreon where I put behind the scenes and extra little bonuses here and there. Thank you very, very much to my patrons, by the way, and huge, enormous thanks to Yap for providing me with this little thing there, valuing my opinion, and I really wish him the best with this project of his.